I, thank you. Thank you very much, Yossi uh, Bailin. You, you obviously raised a number of uh, fundamental points, and, and I'm sure that uh, um, these will uh, allow us to, to have a, a vivid discussion uh, <coughs> subsequently. It's now my pleasure to uh, invite Ambassador Fernando Gentilini to share his remarks for, with us. Uh, Ambassador, you've got 15 minutes. Thanks. Thanks Thank a lot. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for, for, for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here and thanks to be given the chance to, to, to address uh, all of you. Uh, as it has been said this morning, uh, I have the privilege, I don't have the privilege of being someone working for a think tank. Uh, I'm an EU official. Uh, as Josip Bellin was very eloquently explaining, the EU, in a way, is in a place which is different now from many years ago. Uh, there is a EU representative here on the ground, able to uh, to be here, so to 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 talk and to understand. Uh, most importantly, uh, the EU has also a role in the quartet, on which I maybe I will say a few a few a few words. Um, uh, but already came out quite clearly, I think, and also from the discussion this morning. I mean, if there is someone who knows how to fix this issue, I think these are the Israelis and the Palestinians. And I don't think we have to reinvent uh, wheels. Um, this is a place and this is a conflict which has been, I think, from, from, from what I've seen, analyzed in any really little uh, uh, detail and uh, I think that the material which exists is huge, and I think it's impossible even to, 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 to get to know everything. Uh, I would say uh, really a few points on, uh, on how I see things, how I see prospects uh, on, on this process uh, which does not exist at the moment. Uh, but I also wanted to pick up some of the things which have been said in the morning about the EU and ultimately uh, how the EU can be uh, useful. Uh, and to have that kind of discussion, uh, I think we have to see, I would suggest to see what the EU is good at. Because I think this is, uh, this is because asking something that you are not good at uh, doesn't lead you very far. Uh, as there were uh, many, refer many, many reference to the EU global strategy, for instance, this morning, I think I see that strategy First of all, as, a, as an opportunity, I think the fact that it has been issued the first of July this year is very relevant in the middle of all, in the middle of all this. Uh, I will mention three things in that study which I think are, are important in conjunction with, with the process here. Things which uh, I think have to be taken into account. Uh, again, Yossi Berlin has, has, has addressed some of those when he spoke about the knowledge and the expertise uh, by, by the EU on certain issues. Uh, so one thing the EU is good at, then of course the political will, the self-confidence, this is another discussion. But in theory, what the EU is good at is uh, creating stability, prosperity, integrating, uh, creating independence, connecting people. I think we are I mean, our main achievement has been the, the, the internal market. Uh, we are good at dealing with territories, regions, putting things together. We are good at all what is uh, cross borders, uh, trade, transport, energy, water, uh, environment. All these things have been mentioned. I think this is a point to, in my view, to be taken into account what the EU is, 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 is good at. We are also good at negotiating. Uh, the EU itself is a, is a, is a huge uh, negotiating machine. That's where EU officials, EU politicians best spend most of their time in a room making uh, deals. Um, and this, I think, it's something important. It's a know-how. Uh, because through negotiation you understand a lot of things. Uh, you understand, first of all, that only deal that all sides can buy into uh, will be implemented. Uh, so I think this is something important. So it's also important to move from zero-sum game to win-win situation. This is something the EU is doing uh, and it does uh, quite, uh, quite well. And the third thing uh, was also mentioned, which I think is important, uh, is this uh, comprehensive approach, integrated approach. We are good 
on a number of things, which goes from diplomacy, trade policies, environment policies, uh, development, security. Um, I don't want to go into the uh, discussion about the, the military capability. I mean, this is something. But I think the EU has, has a lot of tools. Again, uh, the question is uh, political will, self-confidence. It's obvious that sometimes uh, this is not there. Uh, but I think the potential of all these are uh, enormous, and I think it's important to, to, to keep this in, uh, in, in, in mind. Uh, when it comes to the peace process, I completely understand what has been said about carrots, sticks, and carrots, carrots. But I think, again, the U.S. made it very clear that if, it, if, it, if it's an issue of uh, coming up with an unprecedented package of support is ready to do that. Uh, this special privileged partnership, uh, I think it's something important, it's something that can be unprecedented, that the EU is ready to discuss with both sides and then with the rest of the international community. And personally, I think that this process, uh, we should not just wait this for the end, this should be something uh, put in place to accompany uh, the whole a process, if a process uh, somehow takes off again. So that uh, uh, was about uh, some of the issues which have been uh, raised before. On, uh, on, on, on the map, on, on the Middle East, very practical, uh, as, 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 as concrete as possible. Again, I'm, I, I'm here in this place uh, trying to be useful. This is my only, uh, let's say, ambition. And uh, everything I, I try to do and say is with, uh, with, that, with that view. Uh, as many, 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 many doubts uh, came up uh, in, in previous uh, uh, panels, uh, I, I also want to say very, very firmly that the EU is very much uh, behind the two-state solution. Uh, in a moment where it looks like there are no certainties, I think it's very important to restate what is certain. And for sure, what is certain, at least myself, I haven't heard any hypothetical alternative to the two-state solution which is viable. It has been said, I mean, uh, one state, very difficult to be democratic Jewish at the same time, uh, very difficult, I mean, it will not uh, respond to the Palestinian objective ambition for statehood. Uh, so I think on this it's important to be firm, um, and, and otherwise a, a continuous crisis management can only lead to what we have been seeing in the last period, what we unfortunately continue to see, is a kind of one de facto one state reality which is uh, I think not good for anybody, not for the Palestinians, but not for the Israelis, not for the international. So I think two states is in my view a very firm point on which we have to, 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 to start again. Of course, the issue is how to get there. The issue is when you hear both leaderships in favor of two-state solution, what's their plan to get there? Which is my favorite question, let's say, in, uh, in, 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 the, last, uh, in the last year and, and a half. But this leads me to a second point, which was also uh, discussed yesterday evening, today, and this is that the Middle East peace process, a, a resumption of a meaningful process, is important now. It's not something that we can uh, wait for. Uh, the region is going through a huge uh, challenge. Uh, the period is very challenging. But uh, the Middle East peace process remains an important priority now. This is the debate in the EU which regularly uh, keep up and discuss the, the issues. And making process, progress towards a two-state solution, I think, would contribute to, 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 to the overall situation. Again, this is an issue that uh, it's, it's, it's even, you know, it's, it's a challenge to discuss and to, to go in depth. Uh, and I think I'm not blind, no one is blind, everybody sees what's going on. But a progress towards two states would make, uh, would help the entire region. This is, I think, it's, uh, it's quite clear. Uh, would remove a, a, a driver of radicalization and, and, and unlock uh, new forms of regional cooperation, which are also important in this 
contest. Most importantly, I think, uh, if you compare the situation here with the situation in other parts of this region, where no one has a clue on what the future can be, uh, here, uh, the solution, we said it before, is the two-state solution, and I don't think it's very, it's very difficult to come into terms with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with this. In terms of, so what do we do? Because I think this is the, the, the question. Uh, very personally and again, very practically, I, I really don't see uh, quick fixes at the moment. Since uh, the, the effort uh, by John Kerry uh, collapsed in, 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 in July 14, I haven't seen the two sides re-engaging. Yes, it's true, they can shake hands if they meet in a funeral, but I'm not sure putting them together in a room will change much at this stage, unless this is somehow prepared, unless, as we say, you know, we kind of recreate the conditions for some talks to be, to be meaningful. This is what the EU has been doing in the last period, together with its, uh, its partners, the US, the UN, the Russia. Uh, I think we have been quite active with the quartet in the last year to see how to recreate this, uh, this, uh, these conditions. And uh, I find myself quite, uh, let's say, comfortable with the conclusions we came at, uh, at this report, which was issued beginning of the summer. I think it's quite clear what is uh, threatening the two-state solution. It's quite clear what needs to be done to preserve the two-state option. And again, this is something that no one knows better than the Israelis and the Palestinians. The various measures that we propose are measures that we have discussed, that we, everybody I really, I think, it knows. It's quite clear also what are the trends on the ground which are making this m more difficult, the violence, the incitement, the settlement, uh, the situation in Gaza. I mean, we went through all this and we came up with 10 uh, basic recommendations um, uh, which can be a, a point to start if you want to recreate some kind of conditions, some kind of environment, atmosphere to, to get to the most difficult issues. Because I've never seen a negotiation where you start from the most difficult things. I think you have to get there somehow. And uh, so I consider this an important piece of work. I consider this uh, an important fact uh, for one reason in particular, which is that the entire international community is behind that. EU, US, UN, Russia, I think this is quite relevant. It's quite relevant that everybody could subscribe all these recommendations. And I think uh, it could be a, a basis to, to start with. I don't see, honestly, much traction. Uh, responses to this has been, uh, but history tells us that response at the beginning is always a bit like, uh, you know, you need to to do some work. Uh, this is what what uh, you know I have been uh, I've been trying uh, to do. Uh, my my last point, uh, uh, because this also has been mentioned somehow. <laughs> Please, sorry. I, I can I can I can come to this uh, when when when, when yeah. Uh, just let me finish and I go. And the recommendations are obvious. This report, excuse this report. Me, excuse me, can, can we let the yes, speaker I'll finish, finish and then speech. And then I get back Thank to you. you when we have the question and answer the period on that. But these are known as public, as in on all websites. So it's very easy to, to see where on the press everybody uh, knows that. Um, I was saying, because this has also been raised in several can the EU, can the international community do something without the two sides? Because I think this is ultimately also what some of the speakers before were hinting to. Um, honestly, I don't think so. I think uh, that one has to see the two sides uh, being able to re-engage. Then, of course, everything can be done to accompany this. Everything can be done to embrace them and, 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 and help them to move with, with whatever is, uh, is needed. But I don't think that there is anything which can come from the outside, can be imposed from the outside. Uh, it's more a question to accompany the process. Last word, 
if there is someone in the international community which has a real key role to play, if there is a place where the incentives, the carrots are, I think this is the region. I think these are the countries uh, surrounding Israel and the Palestinians. I think this is Egypt, Jordan, the Saudis, others. I mean, all those who can contribute. I think that is uh, it's a very key thing. It's quite important, in my view, the Arab Peace Initiative is still there at the table as a basis. Uh, because that, I think, is it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it can uh, it can uh, it can contribute. So, I I will stop here. Many 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 thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.